Now that we've graduated to studio strobes instead of incandescent lights, you need to meter differently than you did for those incandescent lights, and there's different considerations. These are split-second strobes for which your camera's meter absolutely and positively will not work. When these are triggered, you have to have your flash meter and you have to have it set in a certain way. These are the things you're going to have to set on this meter and pay particular attention to. These are the things you need to set on the meter before you trip the flash. Number one at the top in the blue square, we have the mode set to a non-cord mode. That means I don't have to have a cord attached from the meter to the strobe lights. When the strobes trip, it will activate the meter and give you a reading. Uh, the green box has the ISO setting, which is something you need to set on the meter and on your camera. The two have to match. They can't be different. In the red box, we see the shutter speed set. That should be set as close as possible to your flash sync speed for your camera. My camera, it's a 200th. The closest I can get on this meter is 1 125th. However, on the camera, we want to leave that shutter speed set at a 200th for all flash exposures. It won't control the density of the picture, but it will eliminate some ambient light. In the cyan box, we see a zero. When I have this set ready to go, it's going to show the aperture is zero. The lower box at the bottom, number five, we can see that the flash has already been tripped and it's displaying an aperture of nine and a half. So I would take that meter reading and put that aperture on the camera before I take the picture. Uh, in this case, it's nine and a half. In the studio, we got a reading of F11. Once you have the meter set up correctly and you've set your camera correctly to match what you have on the meter, then you can meter the scene. On this particular light meter, I can retract the bulb and meter each light independently and the other one, so I can get a ratio for my lights. Once I've done that, I'm going to extend the bulb and I'm going to get an overall reading. I'm using the radio slave to trip these lights. You don't have to do that. You can get another person to trip them. You can put a cord to them and trip them that way, but this is the easiest way. I'll press the test on this and get an aperture setting. It says F11. That's what I'm going to use to take my pictures now with this setup. Let's look at that again a little bit closer so we can actually see what happens on the light meter when we trip the flash when metering for our strobe lights. Up here in the corner, we see that, like on the chart that was shown earlier, the non-cord mode is selected. It's highlighted. When I press the button on the side of this meter, that starts to flash. That means it's primed and ready to meter. It's not metering yet, but when I trip the flash with my radio slave, it will give us the aperture we need for our shot. I'll do that right now. And it says about 11 and a half. That's not quite the reading we got for the other lighting setup, but it's similar. Let me show you that one more time. When we start out, the icon is flashing at the top. We have a zero here for our aperture. The shutter is set close to our flash sync speed. Look in your camera again to see what your flash sync speed is. And we'll trip the flash, and it gives us a meter reading, just a little bit over F11. One of the things I mentioned that's very important when you're taking these pictures is that you're using the sync speed for your camera. For my camera, it's a 200th of a second. Consult your owner's manual to find out what that is. I'm also shooting this one with a wide angle lens. Not a good idea because one, you encroach on the space of your subject and it makes them very uncomfortable. But as you'll see at the end of the video, it doesn't make for the very best picture either. So go ahead and smile. It's better to use a telephoto setting, and I'll now set this to 105 and get essentially the same picture.
very good. But I'm not in her space. Also, it won't look nearly as distorted as it was with the wide angle lens. I zoomed in on the picture we took, the last one, with a 105 millimeter lens to show you the eyes of our subject. There's a couple reasons for this. You can see in this picture something we call catch lights in the eyes. That really adds soul to a picture. In this case, uh, our subject has a catch light on the left and right side of her iris, but it doesn't completely cover her eyes. Uh, they're there, we still see the iris, we still see the pupil, and notice as well how sharp they are. When you're focusing your camera, make sure you focus on the person's eyes. That's the first thing people are going to look at. And if they're out of focus, it really detracts from the picture. Also, our subject is wearing glasses. You can just see a very, very tiny hint in the upper left part of her glasses. You don't want to have the glasses glaring in the picture. Uh, that can be a, uh, taken care of by tilting the subject's head in a particular way, as well as the height of the light and the direction they're pointing. In this, it's pretty good. Uh, just a tiny little glare from the lights in the upper left is uh, not objectionable. Uh, on the right side, you can see there's absolutely no glare at all. Pretty good for a subject with eyes like this.